Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to look at the supply curve. So just how we did the demand curve, and the demand was for mainly consumers and customers, the supply curve is for producers or anyone that makes a product or provides a service. So it looks at more the business side of the economy. And how we had the demand curve and the way we derived it in terms of, you know, if the price was higher, fewer people would buy it. And as the price gets lower, more people would buy it. We can do the same with the supply curve. But in terms of this, we're looking at producers. So if the price was low, only a few people would want to sell the product. Whereas as the price got higher, more people would be willing to sell the product, which is why we get an upward sloping supply curve, which we mark as Ness. For example, if you were selling calculators and you could sell them for one dollar for each calculator, very few people would be willing to sell that calculator. Where suddenly if the price was five thousand dollars for a calculator, a lot of people would start thinking about selling calculators. And that's how we get the movement along the supply curve. And if we were to look at, you know, how we can shift the supply curve. So let's say we were to move it out here. What would that mean? Well, this would mean that at any given price, people would be willing to produce more of that good or service. Or at any given quantity, they'd be willing to sell it for less. So that means if we were to go from S to S1, that would be an increase in supply. And if we were to go from S1 to S, that would be a decrease in supply. So this is very similar to the demand curve, but it looks at the producer's side of things. This is where things can also get a bit more interesting with the supply curve, as you can have different scenarios. So for example, if we were to look at um, a football game or you know a tennis game or something like that you'd have something called a fixed supply and if we were to look at a fixed supply you would have you know only a set quantity of seats for example in a football game so if we're all to make you know, good choices and go and watch an Arsenal game you would have a capacity that the stadium could hold. You physically couldn't have more, which meant that if people wanted to go and this was the price at which they had to pay for a ticket, they would have to pay more. They would have to encourage someone to sell their seat to them and, and they'd have to pay more. Hence the prices increase because no more seats can be provided. There are also certain factors that will cause a shift in supply from S to S1 or S1 to S, uh, the same way that we had the factors that affected demand. So if we were to look at the factors that shift supply, we can start off with things like new technology. And if you were to have new technology, that could reduce your production costs. It could make you more efficient. It could find you better ways to use your resources. Um, so for example, refining crude oil, you could have less waste, which would actually mean that you're producing more of the certain type of oil that you'd like. You could have indirect taxes. So if we were to look at something like uh, a tax being put on a product, it makes it more expensive, which therefore 
it means you can produce less. You can look at production costs. So if the production costs were to go down, for example, it became cheaper for you to buy a certain product or make a certain product, um, your supply would increase. You can have subsidies. And a subsidy is kind of the reverse version of a tax, where let's say you're producing a, a product or a service that benefits society. The government would say, great, find an education, you really benefit society, we're going to give you some money to help reduce your costs, which in turn means that you can produce more. You can use that money to buy a new machine or add new employees or you know, make it cheaper for you to produce. And a big one is also things like natural factors. For example, if you are a coffee farmer and there is a massive storm that wipes out your crop, there is less coffee in the world, which then means supply has decreased. Um, or you can have a drought, for example, or there is a lack of pesticides. So I, I know that there was a big drought in America, which affected a lot of the wheat plantations uh, and the wheat farms. Therefore, the total global supply of wheat massively decreased. And there you have it. That is the supply curve and the factors that also affect supply.